had talked about is like the top things we're worried about are either the over ear, the fat pad, and we weren't sure which. And I, I agree, and I, I honestly can't tell. So what, what I see on the ultrasound, so basically the fat pad kind of starts in the back and runs usually along the side here, and it's just kind of like attached here and, and looses, and that's where they store their fat. And then the ovaries are in this area, and the ovaries um, kind of, we have a bunch of little follicles together. And the mass is kind of right where the intersection of those are. And if I start with the probe of the ultrasound down here and follow the fat pad up, it pretty much stays continuous into the mass. But if I go from the ovary, it does the same thing. So I can see like normal ovary and directly attached to that mass and normal fat pad directly attached to it. So um, what I think, what, the way I interpret that is basically either we have really bad inflammation or cancer or something of the fat pad and the inflammation is causing a reaction around the area of the fat pad and causing like adhesions to develop to the ovary or the other way around. There's abnormal ovary that's very inflamed and causing a reaction of the tissue and we're developing adhesions to the fat pad. Why isn't the overall white blood cell count reflecting that then? Because you're saying really bad, so it seems like the blood work is showing inflammation, but not anything extreme. But it, it may, with the adhesions like that, what can happen, like let's say, like the, the better of the scenarios would be it's the fat pad and just causing irritation. Let's go with the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, it's one of the ovaries, let's say one of those follicles ruptured, that can cause like yolk material to get out throughout the body cavity and just completely do it. If it's a slow leak though, rather than a massive rupture, sometimes the body can like with that reaction end up develop adhesions that lock it into a, a place in that and develop adhesions and isolate that and, like wall it off. And then once it's walled off in that area, it's not causing a, like a systemic reaction that we're not gonna, that we'll see in the blood, like reflected in the blood. It's, this area is very inflamed, but it's walled off, so the body overall is no longer reacting to it. But as much pain as that's causing and as much as it's displacing other organs, like it doesn't mean it's not problematic. And it doesn't mean that something couldn't come along and, and you know rupture again in a different way that is going to like get out of that area and not be able to be walled off and isolated from that area. Does that? So did if I, she had, if she was, she had a um, developing egg or just eggs, and she was having problems with the fat pad, she jumped out or something. Could that? Could that have? Potentially, yeah. Or growing that fast. Well, if it's, if it's a fluid, like a yolk out of an egg, it would still spread like that. Mm -hmm. But with things like, I suppose. I had an iguana that we had to have all the extra because she had developed like nephrosis. Mm -hmm. And inflamed fat pads I've seen from a similar kind of thing, like a fall and just land in a way that like, you know, we hit a corner and cause like some really bad blunt trauma to the fat, affect the way the blood vessels are affecting that. And then that part of the fat like dies off and solidifies. And then like in that process, there's really bad reaction. And probably if we drew blood at that time, the white cells would be really up. Then it gets walled off and it's isolating it to that area, so now the, the white blood cells in circulation kind of calm down and return to normal. But if we're developing adhesion, like if it's painful like that, some of those adhesions could be causing like as she moves, it's, it's tugging against it, it's also very large and it's displacing other things out to the side, like away from their normal thing, like you know the stomach is pushed over and all that, and so it's causing, it's not, that it's not problematic that it's walled off, it's just isolating the really bad, like infected or inflamed material in that area, 
but we're still like has some things going on that with those you know with the adhesions and the size of it it's causing discomfort and causing pain in other ways could the body so, wall it off in a matter of like three days so much so that the blood work wouldn't reflect that and only one of the different like one of the differential you did a differential panel right and there's only really like one or two anomalies in it right and they weren't really the heterophils and the basophils were high, uh, the lymphocytes and the serophils were not. I will say though, I have seen... Lymphocytes you would think wouldn't be high with fat. Yeah. It, reptiles are very, very different. Um, their oh. blood work can be really hard to interpret sometimes. Um, I've seen animals where, like I have this one case in particular that I always think about. It was a full-grown sulcata and it had some type of thermal injury. And it was like fairly responsive, it was clearly extremely ill. We did blood work, we did x-ray, we did ultrasound, we did serial blood work, we did everything and it kept coming back normal. The patient looked absolutely horrible. So we did unfortunately have to euthanize and on necropsy, he had a quarter of his C1 was completely necrotic and it was literally goo. So, and his blood work was fine. It was literally normal. That's what I was gonna ask, is if the yeah. fat can get infected, you can get fat. Well, she's smart on the fecal side. That's what I was wondering if the fat can get infected, like how um, in people it can too. So if it walled off, could that be potentially get infected later? It could be, yeah. There, there are several things going on that could be, like it could be walled off and never create a problem, other than the pain that she's experiencing. But there are some things too, like it could be like a walled off abscessed area, like in the fat pad that does nothing for three months and then she lands funny and opens it up and creates a problem. So ultimately, like based on what we've been seeing on, and this is something too, reptiles, again, they can tolerate some pretty massive things and not show it externally and not show it on things like this. Maybe something that was going on for a while and slowly it's building. It's been so active. Yeah, well then she then she got out, like so she's had this mass and you kind of displaced it, like whatever's walled off, but then when she got out she bumped that and created an, like a little bit of an acute reaction to it that just developed some adhesions from that mass to like the body wall or something and now it's like this hurts because of the new adhesions, but it's not really a completely new thing we're seeing, it just had a little bit of additional reaction that created a more painful situation she while she was out. Like an acute on chronic kind of thing. Yeah. Like reptiles are really good at like asking for for like ever and then they cannot compensate anymore. Or like you're saying like an inciting event happens and then they show us the problems and we're like, well, crud, they're really, really sick and they've been going on for a while but they haven't been telling us. What would you advise? I think ultimately to, to solve this I'm probably looking at surgery. And I would say, like, if if you said we want to do everything and we want to do the right thing and we have, like, unlimited budget, I would recommend doing a CT before we do that um, to see, like, where, like, with, put contrast in so that wherever active inflammation is going on, we're going to see, like, where the most recent problem is. But probably realistically, also, that CT is helping surgical planning so we can kind of get a better idea of what's, what's what and where everything is. Mm -hmm. But probably to, to solve this would be, would be surgery to see what's, you know, exactly what's going on and probably remove the, the badly affected material. I know, like, another thing that was discussed is, like, do we get a sample and send it out for cytology? And my concern with that, especially after looking at what we saw in the other images and, and how it's still looking similar today, like if there is a walled off infection there and we take a needle and, and get a sample of it, we could open that up and create the bad, like artificially create the bad reaction that we're worried about with it being a ticking time bomb. So that's what we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, what, what is, is it pushing on other organs yeah. enough that, yeah. With that x-ray we were looking at, usually um, you can see those like lung fields a lot better and that GI tract is like pushed up against oh, everything. Because these guys don't have that diaphragm, so there's nothing stopping me. I've seen it to where um, on the epoxy, I had a very dragon that had follicles adhered to the heart, like it was that far up. Like, things can get pretty bad. Sometimes I scare you about it, it's just 
a lot of times with how severe it is, by the time we catch it, it is surgical. Um, and that is something you could do as soon as like the next two days um, if you wanted to go that route. If we didn't want to go that route, because that is a lot not only like on us, like as your pet owners, but also on her, hospice would be essentially the other option. Um, there's not a way to like medically cure it, but we can manage her nutritional status, her hydration status, and her pain. Um, but I have no idea what she's going to say on how long we can keep her comfortable for. Um, it just depends on if we can keep this under control. So we kind of have, you know, that gold standard option that Dr. Corbin was talking about with like the CT, the contrast, the surgery, and when we get in there doing everything we can to get the problem out um, is our best shot of fixing her. Um, the middle ground option would be like, okay, something, something's bad in her belly, we don't know for sure what it is, but we can do everything we can to keep her as comfortable as possible, go as strong as possible. But ultimately, if we don't go in there and fix it, it will likely end up taking her life at some point. How would they live 50 to 60 years normally um, in captivity, a long time? They can. It just depends on their care. I mean, you guys can take great care of them, but the hard part is our reptiles in captivity are more likely to get like these reproductive things. I mean, we don't have studies comparing you know, wild versus captive reproductive disease, but they tend to get it more in captivity. So we do sheep lifespans and they get even shortened in female lizards. Um, but she could potentially live a lot longer. The big real question is what are these tissues, what are they involved in? I mean, if it's walled off and we can get it all out, recover great. I had a personal bridge of dragon uh, that was relinquished to me who had reproductive abnormalities for a year in her belly before they finally elected to give her to me. We did surgery. It was really bad in there, but we got everything out. She's happy as a clam. She's totally fine. So they can have their prognosis. It's just ultimately until we have the CT and until we're in her belly, we're not going to be like 100% answer that. There's, with surgery, there's like part of what you mean to like the surgery is called like exploratory surgery because part of what we're going on like we've done the best we can with the imaging so far and putting the pieces of the puzzle together but we're we really are not going to know for sure until we get in and see and so you know the extremes of that if we could get in there and like great this is the fat pad it's just some adhesions we can just remove this part and it's easy the other extreme we can get in and it you know, is looking a lot worse than we ever would have expected to see, and, and we don't know if we can fix it. And that's why, you know, again, it's good to get as much information as we can leading up to that, which is why I would say, like, CT would, would, would be a good step in planning it. Um, another, like, quasi-middle ground is, like, we just plan on going to surgery and see what's going, you know, and get a look and see what's going on and fix what we can identify to, to fix. But the, like the mass is definitely kind of uh, appears to be attached well enough to the fat pad and the ovary that with the ultrasound, I can't like normally you can see like, okay, here's the ovary and there's kind of a distinct bright line here and then this mass or there's the fat pad and like, you know, like a, a distinct border on it and coming from both directions, I can't see a distinct border, which makes me think like whatever it is, has kind of walled off around both parts of the organ, both of those organs. And we might be able to get in and say like, okay, bad ovaries, but we can get in with some sterile Q-tips that, that are moist and kind of break down the, the gentle things and just take out the ovary. Um, we might take the ovary and part of the fat pad if it's adhesed, you know. I feel like that's putting out a lot of it. We also don't necessarily need to make a decision like here and now. Uh, the most important thing at the end of the day is we're alleviating suffering. Um, so I would say continuing with the pain meds with whatever route we go. And in any big situation, you know, so there's three categories that gold standard is supportive. And if we think it's just too much on our end point or quality of life is poor, we can always have a conversation about euthanasia. I know none of these are fun options by any means, 
but the one shoulder lining to all three is we're alleviating suffering at the end of the day. That's that's really our goal. Um, there's not necessarily a big right or wrong route to go, as we go. It can feel that way sometimes. Um, so if you need time to think on it too, I can you know we can get those pain meds on board. Um, we can get you guys like uh, estimates for all of these options, so you have that financial information in front of you as well before any big decisions are made. But whatever route you go, we'll definitely support you guys with. I know it's hard. I know she's your baby. And I know you're allergic to always missing her too. So if you need time, that's okay too. you guys have information, I'll get you home, and before we kind of jump into anything else, you can take some time, and we'll just go from there. Does that sound okay? And then we'll get that question. She all plugged in over there? She's in the back, so that's Yeah, when she's in there. an incubator, I just want to be sure is that, is that nice and warm, she can come back with it. Does she have any pain meds right now? We didn't give her any while she was here, but the tramadol um, is a good one to give her when you guys get back. And then, um, should we go down the more of the hospice route, we can add on an anti-inflammatory. I would just want to recheck that uric acid level to make sure her kidneys can handle it. Okay. Let me go get her for you, and we'll get you guys that info, and we'll go from there. All right. Okay.